Yeah, no worries. Okay, go ahead. So your question is about how do you resolve the ambiguity that we observe in alternative D? Do you see that ambiguity in your IRR graph though? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the ambiguity is in the scion, um, the alternative D plot, that it cuts the X axis twice, one at a very low interest rate, and then one again at a very high interest rate. Mm -hmm. and, and you're asking me about how do we resolve that ambiguity? Have you done any work on, on, on that already? Yeah, so okay. that's what this column is basically. And so in the notes, it looked like we took like the closeout cost and then distributed it over the annual and just like took the net worth of that. Uh -huh. So that's what I did here. I took the negative three, divided it, it by it. five. No, see, that's, that is one of the problems. You cannot just, okay. so never ever, when we're doing engineering economics, we never ever just divide any cash flow by just that number of years, unless the interest rate is 0%, which it never is, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. Because all future cash flow have to be discounted appropriately, right? So if this three year happens at the end of the life cycle of the project at the end of year five. So that's why you cannot just divide three by by five, and you know subtract point uh, three by four point point six from all the cash flow. That's not how it works. The way it works is you have to take the three, assume an interest rate of ten percent, mm -hmm. find the present value of that negative three cash flow at the end, and then you know find the present value for the beginning, and then find the annual value of that present value. And then what values you're gonna get that way, that's what you're gonna subtract from your values, not 0.6, but it will be a slightly different value. It will be slightly lower value than 0.6. It will be still okay. an equal amount that you'll subtract from every year, but that mm -hmm. amount has to be based on, um, based on the interest rate and number of years and all that. Okay, so it would be like, it would be like converting this to present value uh -huh. with like an interest rate of 10% and then would the N be five years? Yeah, N will be five years. So you will, so what okay. I'll do is like, I, the, the way I will convert it, if you if you give me the control of your screen. So let me, let me just request control. Yeah. Okay, I think I can do that now. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna do it on this cell here. So what I'll do is I'll take the negative three and divide that by one plus 10% interest rate, so 1.01, .01, and then raise to power uh, 10. No, not 10, I'm sorry, five. Right. So, and then when I do that, I get 1.86. And again, this is not the be all end all right now. I mm -hmm. will have, you know, negative 1.86 as my cash flow, which makes sense, right? If you have $3 million at the end of five years, in today's dollars, you'll only need $1.86 million if you have an interest rate of 10%. Okay. Right? But okay. then your next step would be to, to use this 1.86 and convert that into, into annualized amount. Again, you're not going to just 1.86 divided by five. That would not be correct at all. You'll have to convert that into equal and annual amount using the P given A formula. Yeah. Supply the P given A formula. I don't know if you can read that to me, but, but maybe. Yeah. So okay. the P given A formula is A equal to, yeah. do you know what the P given A formula is? Uh, no. I have to uh, maybe not off the top of your head, but let's, let's figure that out. Uh, I think that is D times one plus D raised to. Oh wait, power. do we want do we want A given P? Yeah, we want A given P, but it's the same thing, right? It's just reciprocal of each other. Oh, so yeah, you want okay. A given P. Yeah. Okay, exactly. I have that. You do want A. You do want A given P, which is equal to it's... this times that oh. factor, whatever factor you're going to get. But let's see what that factor comes out to be. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be 0 0.1, I'll put a parenthesis here, times 1.1 raised to power, oops, 5 mm -hmm. divided 
divided by, uh, I think it's, no, this, this is incorrect. It's the 1.1 1. 1 raised to the power of five minus one. Yeah, the whole thing 1.1 1. 1 raised to the power of five minus one. See what you get. You get 0.49, which is which is exactly what we are looking for. So essentially, what you need to do is I'll copy that value and then I'll subtract not 0.6, but I'll mm -hmm. subtract. I, I should add now because it's already negative, right? I will just add this value right here. And then I will put a dollar sign so that I'm I can just copy this formula over. Okay. So this yeah. is what you're okay. looking. For. Okay. So you never ever take any cash flow and just divide by number of years, but to distribute it, this is what you have to uh, have to figure this figure out. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks for giving me the chance to record this because I do have a lot of people asking that question. So thanks. Oh yeah, no problem. Thank you.